Ah, oh, yeah. Bags are packed, baby. Here's the deal. We are going to Lake Havasu because uh, me and the boys got kind of a sick opportunity. Got some friends over at Mercury Racing and DCB Performance Marine. They want us to go rip a boat for like a weekend, which is sick. Not going to turn that down. But while we're going out there, I figured this is a good opportunity to do some science because modern speedboats are actually way more efficient than they used to be. I mean, really efficient compared to the days of old or even like 10 years ago. So here's the deal. We're driving my 572 cubic inch big block powered K5 out to Lake Havasu. And I have a sneaking suspicion that my big block truck driving to and from Lake Havasu will burn more fuel than two days on the water in a DCB M37R. Now, that boat is all carbon fiber. It weighs like 6,000 pounds. It does make 1,000 horsepower because it's powered by two Mercury Racing 500R outboard engines. It actually gets really efficient fuel economy. So how efficient? We're about to find out. K5 is filled up. We're gonna go pick up Vinny and Max and we're gonna drive out to Havasu and we're gonna see how much fuel that burns. Let's go. Definitely had to sneak the K5 that oh shit the other night. This thing out in the chip because the neighbors will not be happy about it. I was recently asked by my HOA to uh, never bring this back to the building because of the uh, noise and smell. Who doesn't love that though? Come on. Our chariot awaits. So I filled up my tank before coming here. I've, I'm only at 83% of a tank now, just driving to your house. Oh God. That's uh, like 13 miles from where Zach lives. I got a 130 call that I'm gonna have to take from the back of this shit box. You are not gonna hear a single thing in the back of that, I promise you. Dude, you think I didn't come prepared, dude? Yeah, good Air luck. Pods, noise canceling. Let's go. We only took 12 gallons, we've only driven 50 miles. That's not good.
decibels. And we've been sustaining 103 for the last solid four hours. Yeah, it's a good experience minus the deafening groan. This is gonna be a long lasting headache. At the end of our one-way trip to Lake Havasu, we had driven 326 miles, stopped four times for gas, burned 78 gallons of fuel at a total cost of $427.36, meaning we were able to average just over four miles per gallon while driving at a conservative rate, which for a road-going vehicle isn't exactly stellar. Well, good morning, folks. It's bright and early here at Lake Havasu. Yes, we made it last night after many gas stops and about eight hours of driving, which this should be like a four hour trip, but you know, we had to stop so many damn times. But Tony over at DCB, he's here right now. He filled the boat up yesterday, he put a hundred gallons in. We're gonna see if this boat burns that entire hundred gallons. Tony seems to think that it will not. One of the reasons I wanted to do this comparison is because my buddy Jay has a boat, the Death Dealer. <laughs> It has two motors exactly like the one there in my K5, just a little bit different cam profile, but like everything else is the same. In a weekend on the water, Jay uses about $4,000 worth of fuel. Bar hopping, some 30 second poles, and some 90 mile an hour cruising. That thing is consuming like a thousand gallons of fuel. That's insane. So that's like your old school boat technology. And that's kind of what you typically think when you think of fast boat. You think of just murdering fuel. We're going to see if this DCB is really all that they're hyping it up to be because like if it only burns that 100 gallons, that's impressive. If it burns less than that, that's f***ing ridiculous because we burn nearly 100 gallons driving here. That's f***ing ridiculous. We have just landed at the boat ramp here in Havasu. We've got our vessel for the day. It's a DCB M37R powered by two Mercury Racing 500R engines. And uh, it's sick as f So tell you what, we're gonna do a little tech breakdown real quick. We got Tony here from DCB. He's gonna give us the scoop. We go over some of the tech that makes this thing special and what makes it efficient. Uh, so the efficiency, guys, is the power to weight, obviously. So this boat right here, guys, weighs about 61, 6,200 pounds, as you see it. It's full car grooming, full foam, full vacuum infused construction. You know, our lamination is like top notch. So all the excess weight, all the excess resin is sucked out of the boat. And it's super strong and super solid, as you'll find out today when you guys go for a ride. 10 and a half foot wide, but it's got a 66 inch tunnel. So what it's doing is when you're going down the water at say 80 to 90 miles, an hour you can get up to two miles to the gallon or more which is unheard of in a boat because usually it's like 0 0.8 0 0.9 to 1 if you're lucky so the cool part of this is once you get up on top of the water and you find that happy spot the boat almost just carries its own weight so the boat doesn't weigh anything when you're running down the lake i want to talk about these outboards because these seem to be all of the, the new flavor yeah. yeah it seems to be all the hype now right yeah. it makes 500 horsepower and 89 octane yeah. but when it comes down to the drive Talk to me about how this differs from something like this boat. Depending on the boat, the weight, the setup, the, the prop shaft height to the bottom of the boat is super, super critical. If you're too high, the boat's inefficient, you run out of water. If you're too low, the boat's a lazy turd, mm -hmm. and you're not getting the efficiency. And this thing's basically, you want to get this out of the water. So you're running here, which is great because the boat's up on tilt. So right here, this is all that's in the water because this is above the water line. So the water is basically hitting here Yep. and it's super efficient. So you're seeing this part of the propeller, which is one spinning out. So the water comes across here. These blades like Mercury can, they make 13 rake, 15 rake, 18 rake, which basically gives the boat either it's going to need to lift it more or push it more. So we're running a 15 rake because once you're up and running the hole and you see the angle of the tunnel, which is the weighing angle of the tunnel, and the boat has a certain attitude running down the water, so it's packing air, and the compression is basically back here where CG is, which is about that last step. And this boat just gets super happy and super efficient. So, I mean, we've got our propeller slip down to five, six percent. Really? Which, which the boat is, once you get the boat dialed in with everything, the height is right, the propeller, you, this boat is meant to be pushed not have the nose pulled up and be inefficient. So you'll feel it when we're in it today, man. It's super, super efficient. And so this is like one of the full CNC prop, That's it. fully polished. Yep. That... Yep. They're, they're 12, oh, they're about 12, 8, 13K for a pair. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? They work and they stand behind you guys. They have a full one-year warranty. And that's what I mean, you guys. This is great to have this partnership with Mercury, have you guys here. 
Mercury Racing reached out to us and said, hey guys, can we do something with you? And I'm like, absolutely. Well, we appreciate you guys uh, being so kind to bring yeah. a sick ass boat like this out to us. Yeah, geez, how, how are they appreciative of us bringing out some cell phone cameras and uh, a <laughs> bunch of idiots from YouTube? Let's talk about this hull design too, because so this is kind of what makes this 37R special where it's complete channel all the way through, right? Yeah, yeah. so it's a true tunnel. Um, we do make boats with center posit. This one is, uh, you know what it is, it's a bigger water, more user friendly. Like if I've taken a boat like this from from Newport to Catalina in like 22 minutes. Really? Yeah. That's you cooking. Get lunch, get a morning ball, come back in the afternoon. It's kind of fun. Through two, three foot chop pretty efficiently at 75-ish, depending on conditions and depending on obviously who's with you. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, so if you guys look down the tunnel, you can see the angle of the bunks you know, from the front to the back, you know, so what it's doing is as the air is coming into the front, it's like a wing. So the air is coming in and it's funneling and then basically the air has nowhere to go. So it gets right about in this area. Yep. And that's what gives you the lift. So the boat will actually essentially start to carry its nose. And then as the boat gets happy, it wants to get it and you're just pushing it. It's super efficient going through the water. So you're creating an air pocket. Oh, I see. Yeah. So, so the depth true. here, so this is what you're talking about, yeah. right? So, so the depth in the front of the tunnel. So if you look at these uprights on the trailer, you see how tall they are up here. Hey, put your arm in there real yeah. quick. So yeah, so we're this deep here. Okay. Right? And then when we get to the... see the sponson and the spray rail. So all these angles and all these steps make a whole lot of difference in these chimes um, and the way the steps work outward. So this boat's, it's basically progressive lift. The boat's just lifting up out of the water the faster you go. But no. then when you get to a certain point, you don't want it to feel flighty and sketchy, which we work really hard to do. So we did some certain tweaks in this area to give it certain areas where now you can see, see in here, see how much? Yeah. That's where the tunnel's less. So basically the bottom of the boat and the tunnel, you're like this. So you're taking that air and you're squeezing it and you want to hold it where the compression's happy. So that's why it's like a compression tunnel is basically what you call it. Badass. It's hard because nothing replaces horsepower. Yep. And I'll repeat that. The QC platform that Mercury makes, unheard of. It's ungodly power. But when you take this and you take the overhead, the maintenance, the insurance, and the fun factor is still there. So these guys that maybe could have both. So you got your fast boat, maybe you got your ski boat, your pontoon boat. This boat you're going out and you're running from Miami to Key West and you're using five or 600 dollars of the fuel, not 2,000. Ah. And that's a big thing to say. Damn, Benny. Yeah, because we put, yeah. I put 100 gallons in yesterday. Fuel prices are decent here. So it, it was like 400, a little over 400 yeah. bucks. You will have more than enough to go all day. We spent today. that in Zach's truck driving here from LA. Yeah. Yep. So we just went 15 miles at the cruising speed of a hundred miles an hour, pretty much average the whole way. And uh, we didn't really burn that much fuel. So I think what this means is uh, we are in an economical vehicle. You're in a crisis. You own a vehicle that is less economical than a speedboat, which means you should probably just get a speedboat. I think, I think you're right. People say the worst part of owning a speedboat is the cost of ownership and you already have it, but you can't go on the water.
All right, so this was interesting. I actually decided to pull out my decibel meter because this thing was just as comfortable and pleasant to ride in as it was fast. While cruising this M37R at 90 miles an hour, it's quieter than my K5 is at idle. That's right, even with wind noise. And cranking it up to 125 miles an hour, it's still quieter than my K5 cruising at 90, or even idling for that matter. It's insane. The gas yet? I stopped like 15 times for your truck, and we still haven't gassed up once. No, we've gone way faster in this than we did in my truck. And it's significantly quieter. Oh, my ears do not hurt today at all. Yeah. I'm actually feeling refreshed instead of exhausted. Shut up, Max. after spending seven hours on the lake going absolutely wide open throttle for most of the time in a boat packed with six fully grown men, we only managed to burn 50-ish gallons of gas. The efficiency of these things are absolutely insane. And it was a relatively pleasant ride the whole time. That was a hell of a day. And I think we learned that, uh, well, my truck is extremely inefficient. <laughs> and boats are Sorry, sick. Dollars here. And boats are sick. Boats are sick, dude. We gotta get one. By the way, we used more fuel in my truck coming one way than this thing did all day. And we were hammering on this thing all day, dude. I don't understand how we Our made... average speed must have been at least 70 miles per hour. Easy. Easy. So... Time to I go. Gotta, are we getting a boat? It. Yeah, I think we need a boat. Thank you to Mercury Racing and, of course, DCB for... Uh, yeah, letting us do this and not making us pay for the gas in this thing because, uh, yeah, we're going broke as it is. We're still going to get home. Yeah, I know. We're actually going to see if we could ship Zach's truck back and roll with Leaf and it'll be cheaper than driving back. God damn. <laughs> and we'll see you on the next one.